Space Marines on motorbikes. It is iconic, but it's not overly practical. But if they were on hover bikes instead, now that could be pretty cool. Not only would it be combat effective, it'd be a lot of fun to make, and I think it would stand out a lot on the tabletop. I think we should do it. Yes, we are taking a squad of Primaris Outrider bikes and we're trying to convert them into hover bikes. Why you might ask? Well, if you're new to this series on the channel, we are slowly building an entire Blood Angels army. Only, I like the idea of taking my time and putting more effort into each squad so that hopefully I can make them a bit more interesting and unique, not only for me to keep, but for you guys to watch. The kit itself is two sprues, one large and one small. I'm starting off by cutting bits out, but it's not long into the instructions to build the model that I already need to start thinking about the custom parts. Lots of model kits will give you some creative freedom straight out of the gates, but this is a bit trickier with our Primaris Outriders because the wheels are part of the chassis already and the rider's legs, well, they're molded on. So we travel to the interwebs and find Scriv Paints. He's a 3D designer and an incredible painter. On Colts 3D, he has these grab bike STLs that we could use to convert our motorbikes. Perfect. Into the Creality resin printer they go, and a couple of hours later, they are ready for action. I have a motorized hobby tool to help cut some of these sections down, but I'd rather have the piece clamped if I'm sawing, so I'll jump across to the clippers and then sand down any rough patches. I've fallen victim to the push fit model trap, and I didn't clip those inserts away on the first model. Normally, the push fit system is brilliant, but on a kit like this with the connecting point being a flat surface, I think you're better off chopping each of them and then gluing. Plastic glue for plastic pieces, but super glue was needed to connect the resin sections and I'd normally leave off a whole bunch of these outer style pieces to make the painting easier. However, with the sponging dark method I'm using on my Blood Angels, having the model completely assembled will actually help me keep the shadow areas darker. They're looking ace. Now I've printed the custom parts in a bright color so that you can see what parts have been added on before I prime the whole thing black. Starting a painting project with a sponge and not a brush. Ah, uh, yes, I've missed painting my blood angels. Using a sponge is a way for me to create a stipple brush effect quickly by having one dab I can cover an area of a model that would otherwise take 20 or 30 stabs of a brush. I'll still use a brush to get into some of those hard to reach areas and also when I work my way up to the brightest highlight and want to be more accurate. But I started with the brown because personally I enjoy the weathered look this gives the armor, as though there is a layer of grime in there. As I go, I'll add the paint pot colors up here in case you'd like to color match and towards the end of the video, I'll also pop up a list of each of the colors used. Now I just double checked and counted and it has been eight videos since my last dedicated Blood Angels update. I think my goal was to have it as every third or fourth video, so I dropped the ball there a little and last time around, I put up a poll and asked you what I should paint next. Over 1300 of you voted and Outriders weren't first or second. They were only third in the results. So what gives? Well, Dreadnoughts and Terminators beat them out, but I'm still waiting on some custom parts to arrive for them. So anyway, I decided that it was better to make the bikes interesting now, rather than a further delay in the series. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> I hope you've noticed that there aren't mid-roll ads that are interrupting your experience watching these videos, and that's made possible by the amazing sponsors that we have. This series in particular is sponsored by the incredible team over at Emperor. So instead of a garbage, unskippable ad, I'll quickly tell you a little about them. 
Emperor are an online store where you can purchase your Warhammer models at a discounted rate and still earn a bunch of loyalty points. I had already been buying models from Emperor for about 5 years before I even started the channel. Now for example, the new Blood Angels Combat Patrol is $280 from the Warhammer shop compared to being only $224 from Emperor. Now this currency is dollary dues and yes, they are currently only shipped within Australia. For everyone else, don't worry you won't miss out. In the video description I have some other links for you. Thank you again to Emperor for supporting us and if you'd like to check out their store, well here are the details and I'll add a link in the video description. I've spoken about the backstory of this Blood Angels force in previous videos, but I'll need to bring you up to speed again real quick before I explain what is going on with our jet bikes. Newly promoted Captain Sirius Corridan finds himself in command of a section of the third company designated Forlorn Peril. His mission was to lead a reprisal strike deep into the heart of High Fleet Leviathan. While in transit and before reaching their intended destination, their ship, the Rancor of Baal, was thrown from the warp prematurely and into a potent psychic field, instantly killing their astropath. They immediately joined combat with a splinter fleet above an unnamed world. Destined to lose combat in the void, Corridan and company drop to the surface of the world to seek the source of the psychic nexus. Falling from the atmosphere, he notices scattered imperial settlements, whilst above, the Rancor of Baal flees to escape total destruction. Corridan and his men are now cut off from reinforcements, resupply, and the light of the Imperium. For months now, they have found themselves in endless combat, attempting to protect the people of this world, a world deemed too insignificant for star maps or chapter houses. Task Force Forlorn Peril relies on a belief in their faith and a willingness to adapt outside of the strict Codex Astartes if they are to protect this world. So this backstory explains the weathered armour and the focus on units that are fast paced as well as a contingent of death company led by chaplains and elite units like dreadnoughts. There is no reprieve on this world and you will need to be willing to fight until death and then beyond. So why jet bikes? These marines landed with outrider motorbikes but quickly discovered they were not suitable for the conditions and would need to be altered. The settlements and surrounds are littered with obstacles and debris from months of sustained combat and this difficult terrain significantly slowed the motorbikes with their limited agility and clearance height. The Hive Fleet themselves had adapted during their time on world and were sensitive to the vibrations being caused from the heavy tread tyres. The company's sole tech marine analysed the data contained in each after action report and is encouraged by Captain Corridan to display initiative to solve problems. The outcome? Well, he liberated some industrial supplies from one of the planet's now idle mining corporations to create bikes that are capable of hovering. Eh, hey, motocicleta. Hmm, sorry about that. Outnumbered and outgunned, the company's marines can now employ additional hit and run tactics thanks to the increased stealth and the stability on the mounted weaponry allows for more effective ranged attacks whilst on the move. A knock at the door interrupts my narrative flow. This had better be good. Oh my, well, what do we have here? One of you magnificent individuals has sent me marshmallow fluff? What is this madness? This nectar of the gods? Wait a second, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this box. Tim you crafty pooch, you've gone and painted me so many Blood Angels models in my style to join my army. What on earth? Did you cave because I hadn't made one of these video updates in so long? If that's the case, I'm not going to make any more, and you guys can build me an army. I kid, I kid. Thank you so much to you and the amazing family for these gifts. Tim gets a pass on this one, but you guys aren't allowed to send me your amazing models. They're for you to keep. Marshmallow magic though. You guys are more than welcome to send me snacks. You'd think I'd say no to that. I'm not made of stone. 
Thank you so much to all of these amazing patrons. Your support means that I can continue making these dorky little videos. Don't ask me to share the marshmallow fluff though, I won't do it. In fact, by the time you're watching this video, know that I have consumed all of it. No regrets. Where were we? Right, Space Marines on the move. On the move indeed. Let's have a go at making our own bases for them. I want my models to stand out, so I'm going to keep my bases dark and simple. That might sound strange, like surely I should just create the most thematic and extravagant bases, right? On a single model, I think that looks great, but army-wide, it could be too busy. I want to show the ruined roads, and this will give me an opportunity to play around with cork, because last time I did, it bent a little. One of our amazing viewers, VY78, gave me some great advice, so I'm taking it on board and testing it out. I've cut the pieces of cork out, torn the edges, and rather than sticking them on the plastic oval base now, they've been glued together with PVA and squished together beneath some heavy books for a couple of days. Now they have dried hard and flat without any curling or warping. Thanks so much VY78, I owe you one. Primed black and the dry brushing around the edges and potholes is with a dark and then a medium grey. For the worn and faded painted road markings, I'm masking off a couple of shapes and then sponging an off-white. With the patches of rubble and debris, I make sure not to apply any over these. Once dry, I get my favourite part of the process. Ah yes, the tape peel away. A couple of dead shrubs, scorched earth style, that have been glued onto the base into the cracks and the various potholes, courtesy of the army painter. And I reckon that's about it. I think we should check out the models. Let's do it! Here's a list of the paints I used to paint the Blood Angels Marines today, in case there was a section that you'd like to colour match. And did any of you notice that the sergeant has two helmets? As in, he's wearing one and the other is on his hip? I hope you've already fallen for my trap and commented below without knowing the reason why. For you see, this sergeant just so happens to be the health and safety rep in this company, and he's heard word of these cavalier marines getting around without a helmet, and if he spots you, he's going to pull over and make you wear one of these helmets. That, and I didn't want to have to paint his face, and I didn't want to have to clip the other helmet off the side of his body. It's mainly the OHNS backstory though, I promise. But I'm sure you'll never see me paint two Space Marine helmets in another video. I probably have over 1,000 points now. Surely, let me know below if you'd like to see some narrative style bat wraps with this force. I'm thinking cutting the whole thing down to 15 to 20 minutes in length, rather than focusing on the rules, instead we effectively describe the story developing over the top of some highlights. And next time around I'm considering painting a Death Company Dreadnought, or maybe some Blood Angels Terminators. What do you think? I've been Mike, you've been incredible for making it through to the end of the video. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one. Well done. Do I click it here? You sure do.